Jennifer Anderson. Uh, I've known her for years because she's worked with the OU Management Society. She's a past president of the chapter up there, and then she works on our global steering committee for the Management Society. And, and just, but this is the only organization. I know she gets involved in a lot of places and a lot of things because she wants, she, she knows how to make a difference. Um, and the fun thing about her is that she had her first little baby. Well, she's married into a family where she got automatically twins that were teenagers and a, girls and a son that was like 12 or so. I'm trying to remember how old he was when he was nine. Anyway, so that was like an automatic family. And then she had uh, this cute little girl that's got to be two, two and a half. This two and a half little Sarah Avery that's the cutest little thing you've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, it's just so, she's got these kids all spread out and all this, and yet she's still involved and doing things as much as she can and runs her own business called Career Coach Jen. Uh, look up online, it's Career Coach Jen. And uh, gives great tips, works with companies, works with individuals on consulting. But what she knows a lot about is how to help you with your personal brand. Um, I think you can, uh, let me tell you a little more, she's a contributor to media with guest appearances on KSL News, The Matt Townsend Show, various podcasts in Desert News. She's published in Forbes and ranked as the top 40 to follow on Twitter. Um, she's, uh, I think I covered most of this. Uh, and you're the creator of this, uh, of a new uh, 3 a.m. with God journal. Um, it's a blog online that you're just starting right, I don't know if it's up and going yet, but almost. And uh, thought after speaker about career management and uh, a lot of groups that she's worked with. So I want to introduce and, and just tell her how grateful we are to have her here because we're just, as I said, she's a dear friend. And I think you will really learn a lot from her. We appreciate her being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Mute this thing. Can you hear me okay? It's unmuted? Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm somebody who's going to walk around. So just so you know, and I'm sorry, cameraman, just in advance. <laughs> hey, anyhow, let's see what happens. I didn't, um, Katrina is fantastic, and I was really impressed that she could stay at the podium. I'm like, I could not do that. I'd be like walking around. Anyhow, so um, it's so great to be here, and it's so fun. I, I love these training classrooms, and every once in a while when I'm invited to BYU to, to speak, I'm like, oh, yay, I get to pretend to be a professor. This is so cute. This is awesome. Okay, so. Here's the deal, ladies. I got to tell you, and, and this is this is something that Rixa has come to know as we've we've known each other for like, I don't know, yeah, it's a long time, a really long time. So, um, I am not really good at sugarcoating stuff. I'm that lady that speaks up in relief society and says the things that nobody else wants to say. I'm serious, I am that person. You're going, oh my gosh, okay. So, if honesty and directness and truth doesn't work for you then you might not want to stay, okay? But if you want to know some cool stuff that's going to help you have a really great career, be here with me. What do you think? You want to do this? Sure. Okay, awesome. We're too scared to stand up right now. I get it. <laughs> totally get it. And forgive me, I brought a little frog with me. So that springtime thing that happens. Anyhow, so hopefully my voice doesn't crack like a 15-year-old boy. But if it does, we'll just say that word again and bring it back. So, but seriously, ladies, there's so many cool things that we can be doing. And I recognize that in my role as a speaker, as a business owner, as a wife, as a mom, I call myself a bonus mom because I call my stepkids my bonus kids. As she mentioned, I have great kids. And so I never know how long I'm going to have with somebody. And I never know how many times I'm going to have an opportunity to interact with people. So I always just like to bring it. Here I am, OK? And, um, and I also know that too, especially I'm talking about personal brand today, right? So I want you to know who I am and what I stand for. And we're going to get into this whole thing about personal brand. I'm, Casey, I haven't seen you in a really long time. Like a really long, when did we last see each other? Here. Here, like six years ago. I don't even know. Long time ago. It's crazy. I think you had longer hair back then or something. Yeah, it's good to see. And you got the turquoise jacket memo and so did Judy. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. Yay. Okay. Wonderful. So. Um, so as we're so we're going to be talking about everything, and I hope you take notes. So if you need paper, like ask your neighbor for paper. You're going to want to take notes. There's good stuff, all right. There's really good nuggets. I'm going to share with you. I promise. 
totally promise. I've been doing this for like 20 years. I kind of got to like figure it out, right? So please take notes. Don't check Facebook. Um, okay, let's start with a reality check. So, is it Kelsey? Yep. Am I reading that right? Kelsey, will you read this for me when I put it up there? Yep. Okay, good. And you're good reading voice, right? Okay, here we go. Bam, right? Can these lights be turned off, these right here? Do you know how to do that? I just, I want you guys to be able to see this. Good, okay. So when you hear that, see that, whatever, what's going on? What's, what's, what's happening in this part of yours? Come on in, got plenty of spots. Clear, yeah. Right, be clear about it, right? Absolutely, please. I was just gonna say, sweet, I know what I wanna be known for. Good. I'm on the right track. Good, I love it, I love that. That's good, you wanna share it with us? You wanna share it with me? Yeah. I wanna become a literary agent and I wanna champion books that I would like my kids to read. Okay, okay, cool, awesome, I love it, very good. Okay, all right, anything else hit you from this? Please? Uh-huh, sure, yeah, right, absolutely. Because I don't know about you, but I got 24 hours a day, right? Right, for sure. And where's, where is she? Anyhow. What's, where's the gal with the long hair, with the bangs? What's her name? The Angel. Walked Angel, in. walked in, walked out, okay. okay. But Angel said, you know, know what to say to, yes to, want to say no to, right? Because you only get 24 hours a day, right? So it's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So in the end, ladies, I don't want any of you to be known for nothing. I want all of you. Hi, Angel. We're just talking about you. If your ears are ringing. Um, I don't want any of you to be known for nothing. I want you to know what you want to be known for. Okay. And that's what the crux of this whole class is going to be about. So we've only got about a half an hour. We're going to cruise through this. And so I want to make sure that you get that and you embrace it. You know what's really cool? is that we know what our first estate is. What is our very first estate? Come on. Church, church answer, we know this. Huh? Uh-huh, what's our very first estate in the pre-existence? We are daughters of God, right? Daughter of God, first and foremost, that's our first thing. And then we get to come to this lovely earth, right? And so we get to be a daughter of our earthly parents and a sister and for some of us, we get married, and for some of us, we become a mother. I became a mom for the first time at 41. I had, like, crossed that off of life's to-do list, right? I was going to be favorite Aunt Jen. I totally rock play dates, right? Okay? But our first estate, ladies, is to be a daughter of God. And ladies, he doesn't want you to be known for nothing. Wake up to what he is telling you and inspiring you to do. It's a really cool thing and have confidence in that, and he knows every single one of us. That's a beautiful thing. Let that give you confidence. Let, let, let that give you wings, okay? Give air to your wings. It's a really amazing thing. So remember that. And when we're here at this Women in Leadership Conference, lots of opportunities, lots of places for us to lead. To only say, I want to say amen. Amen, excuse me, when Angel was talking about right this, okay? Right, wherever you're at, but lots of opportunities. So remember this, okay? I want you to be known for nothing, but you decide for yourselves what you want to be known for. Don't let other people do it for you. We're going to talk a little bit about why we're going to talk about it on this. Okay, so let's talk about career management. So what is career management to you? That phrase, career management. Yes, please. Taking ownership of your career and what, where it's directing you. Good, go. yeah, ownership. Okay, fabulous here. Yeah, same thing. You, okay. you own it. You point yourself in the direction. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely, please. I think being intentional uh -huh. um, about what you do, what you teach your career development, your business intent, not just following your career, but being intentional about it. Yeah, absolutely, make some choices, please. I think passion can be a factor. Okay, how so? Mm-hmm, absolutely, that's great, absolutely. So, 
career management for me is recognizing it's your career, not anybody else's. So um, years ago, I was working for a recruiting firm, and I got a resume of a candidate that was a great fit, a great technical fit for this job that I was looking to recruit candidates for. So I called him up and said, hey, it's Jennifer. I got your resume. I want to talk to you about such and such position. And he said, wait, who are you? This is Jennifer. I got, your, I got your resume for such and such position. He's like, what? And I said, well, don't you remember? You, you emailed me. You know, it just, I, He just emailed me that day. And he said, oh, wait a minute. What time did you get that email? And it was just like about an hour and a half before. He said, oh, my wife sent my resume. And I said, what? Your wife? He said, yeah. She and I were having a conversation, which we really know is kind of a fight. We were having a conversation, and she wants me to make $10,000 more a year. I said, great, find me another job. And so what was she doing? She was emailing his resume out to a bunch of places. And then not telling him where she sent them, you know. It had his cell number on there. You know, he might get phone calls, right? Okay. But I, <laughs> so here I was in this very unique position as a recruiter to help the guy get an interview. And by the way, I'm really good at negotiating. And I typically get people a really good raise. And I was in this unique position to help make that happen. And I didn't represent the candidate. I refused to submit him to any of my clients. Because he'd abdicated responsibility, handed over that responsibility to somebody else. OK? Bad news. Bad news. So let's all pinky swear we won't do that, OK? <laughs> right? OK? It's like a really bad idea. Own your career and do those things for yourself, right? Okay, that's a whole nother like slew of conversation about husband wife stuff, right? We won't even get into that right now. Okay, but the deal is, is that there are a lot of people just waiting for somebody else. Some, one of one of one of you gals spoke up and said, you know, not not making those choices, letting somebody else make choices. Don't do it. Okay, recognize it's your career. It's not your boss's career. It's not your college counselor's career. It's not your spouse's. Your any your mom's career. No, it's your career, ladies. What do you want out of it? Okay, what do you want to do? All right. Okay, also making time for managing your career. You gotta find time to do things. We each get 24 hours. How do you wanna manage your time around that? I'm not talking about 10 hours a day being on LinkedIn, okay? I'm not talking about going to every networking event you can get your hands on. That's all I'm talking about, okay? But find that balance, figure out those things that will make sense for you, but make time for it, okay? That which is important to us, we make time for it, right? Finally get hungry enough, you're gonna cook yourself something or go drive down to Wendy's at the bottom of the hill, right? Okay? Make time for it. It's your career. Nurture it. Help it along. One of my clients, he's um, that I do career coaching with him. He has three kids. He calls them my little monkeys. They're just all over the house. And his wife stays at home right now full time with them. And he's like, every time I come home, she's just like, huh, you know, please help me, save me, right? So he knows that his monkeys are going to just be kind of crazy and not leave him alone. And so for him to have some career management time, he gets up 4 a.m. once a week. And over here, she's like, mm, no, I'm not getting up at 4 a.m. <laughs> Okay, but you're also not, you probably don't have three little kids at home yet either, okay? You'll get it later, totally, trust me, trust me, you'll get it, okay? But once a week, he gets up at 4 a.m. By the way, by 8 o'clock that night, he's kind of tired, right? Okay, he just, he is. So he picks a day that makes sense where he doesn't have to have a late night meeting or something going on in church or anything else, okay? And during that time, from about 4 to 6, he jumps on LinkedIn, he sends out emails, he connects with people, sets up appointments so he can have lunches with people in his network. Because he doesn't want to just be cruising through his week, get to the end of the week and recognize he ate lunch at his desk every day. But in order to not eat lunch at his desk every day, he sets aside that time first to make sure he's connecting with people. Or if he attends a networking event, he's got a stack of business cards, he spends some of that time connecting with people on LinkedIn, right? So just to make that time, you find that hour, two hours, whatever it is. Or go crazy, turn off the television, what? Unplug, right? It's amazing. It's amazing what we can do, okay? So look for those ways. Look, for, you've got the time. We can all do it, trust me. This is whatever you're gonna focus on, okay? All right, also, make good choices about what you know you should do. Every single one of you in this room knows there's something you should be doing for your career right now. Every single one of you, and you're not doing it. I get it, I totally get it. I'm two weeks behind my thank you notes. I usually sit down on Mondays and write down my thank you notes for whatever happened the previous week. A couple weeks behind. 
it's okay. I'll catch up. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay? But every single one of us has something. We're like, ah, oh, I had to take care of that. Just do it. All right? Maybe find somebody at this conference. Find an accountability partner. Say, hold, I'm going to hold you accountable to something. You choose. You hold me accountable to something. Okay? And check in with each other about three weeks after the conference. Okay? It's a good, it's a good way to do it. Trust me. And if you want to have a really good accountability experience, put some money on it. That'll help you, definitely. Trust me. I used to have an accountability partner. If we didn't get our things done that we really needed to get done that week and we would tell each other ahead of time, we had to pay $200 to the charity of choice of the other person. <laughs> I never missed any of my tasks. Not that I didn't want to support her charity of choice, right? Well, but 200 bucks. It's like a sweet outfit, okay? <laughs> so anyhow, so you think about that, right? So make sure do those things that you know. That's career management. So let's talk about personal brand and how this fits into it. Can we help you get to something? Are you okay? Okay, awesome. Let's put the lady with the crutches in the most difficult spot possible. There is spots over here if you don't want to have that happen. Okay, personal brand. So when you think of personal brand, what comes to mind? The artist formerly known as Prince. Uh-huh, okay. I like it good. Marilyn. Right. I can be the white box, but I need to be Marilyn. Right, absolutely. So I carry a camera a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm getting people's faces. I know, and she's good at photography. I'm, I'm her husband. <laughs> I know, you kind of are, Chet. Yeah, we get it. We know she's the force for all sorts yeah. of stuff. We totally get it. We know, ladies, right? We get it. Okay. All right, wonderful. Personal brand, what comes to mind? Yes, please. Your way of being. Your way of being. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay, what else? Please? What, makes you stand out? what makes you stand out? So says the lady in the red hat. Right? That's fantastic. That's great. You're rocking that hat, by the way. That's awesome. So good to see. Please. Tina. Okay, good. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh my gosh, that's so great. So fun to be on campus. Thank you for doing that for me. Yeah, how you're going to be remembered, right? How do you want to be remembered? Was there a hand over here? Yes. Just, just uh, when people see that brand, like what is it they think? What is that first? Person? Yeah. Yes, sure, absolutely. Well, it's so true. It takes like seven seconds to establish a reputation in, your, in, in the mind of somebody else, the first seven seconds. And it takes three years to change their mind. Yeah, seven seconds, bam, that fast. Okay, and for all y'all that are dating, keep that in mind, okay? All right. <laughs> It's totally the real deal. <laughs> and for, for those of you who might be like dating on part two, like I did, you know, that was, I had a lot more knowledge of myself at 39 than I did at 22, okay? So anyhow, absolutely, right? It's how people perceive you. So these are some things that are, um, that I have found to be really critical about personal brand. First of all, it's the how and the why behind what you do. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. So what kind of, what kind of uh, college degrees are we in this room? What, what do we got? Psychology. Psychology? Accounting. Leadership. Leadership. By the way, God bless the accountants, wherever you are. Thank you. Okay, what else? Business management. Business management. Okay. Huh? Okay. So JDs. Okay. What else? Literature. Literature. Okay. Lit of course yeah. you do. Of course you're so smart. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's just go crazy and say that I enroll all of you in nursing school tomorrow myself included, okay? And in four years from now, we pop out of school as nurses and we got our cute little stethoscopes, right? Okay. I think we should be the turquoise scrubs girls. Can we do that? Okay, the three of us will be, the, and the, you can be the cute red scrub girl, right? We'll have our things, okay? But here's the deal. We're all gonna have a body of knowledge, right? We're gonna have knowledge about nursing. We'll have taken all these classes, okay? All right, but our brand is not defined by our job as a nurse or our, our degree as a nurse, okay? It's more about the how and the why. And I'll tell you what right now, I'm so not signing up for the pediatric department. I can't do that. Seeing little babies like hurting freaks me out. I really have a hard time with that, okay? I'd be really great in like probably oncology. 
I have a few friends go through cancer and die from cancer, and so I've got a thing there. Like, I love it, and I love just sitting with them, massaging their hands, and talking, giving them a place to share their story before they pass on. I could do that, okay? Now, my knowledge is going to be the same as all of you, as all of you, right? Okay? But my how and my why, how I'm going to show up is going to look different than how it's going to be for every single one of us. That's your brand, ladies. It's how you go about living your life. It's how you interact with people. It's the things that you say. It's the things that you do. That's what your personal brand is. Your personal brand is not a job title, okay? Now, there are going to be some things you will accomplish, like the accountants, right? Okay, all right? Also, it's your mark on the world. That's why I use this little brand with a question mark, right? Like, what's that brand? That's a question mark. How do you, you want to leave people? You know, we, we know where branding comes from, right? Like the, the, the cattle ranchers, we'd all bring our cattle together, and Katie over here and I would both bring our brown and white cows to sell at market. And Katie's like, look at my beautiful cow. And I'm like, that's not yours, that's mine. She's like, no, no, you see that brown spot on the bottom left leg? That's, that's I'm like, no, 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 mine had brown spot on the left leg. So we'd have problems, right? So what, how did we solve it? We came up with branding arts, right? Like Judy's, right? Okay. Now, you could have a K, right? And I'll do like a J or something, right? Okay, well, just for our brand, okay? So, but that stood for something. Her K would stand for something, and her family name and what they did and how they raised their cattle would stand for something which would be different from me and my family, all right? And at the end, sure, we're both selling cows, right? I mean, they probably both have brown dots on their back left leg, right? Okay, but the brand allows us to differentiate. And you might have heard of the phrase, ride for the brand, right? Okay, so the idea is like, what's that brand and riding for it, okay? Always keeping focused for that brand. So you are a brand of yourself. So this is why, again, you wanna think about what's gonna be your how and your why behind what you're doing. Okay, no matter what you're doing, in any roles, anywhere, your how and your why. And the more consistent you are, it's so much easier to live your life. Because it's not like you wake up and it's like, oh, it's Friday. Okay, let me put on my Friday skin suit and zip it up. Here we go, right? And, oh, tomorrow's Saturday. Sweet general conference. Get to hang out pajamas all weekend. Woot, woot. And we had Easter candy with it. Thank you. Okay? No, it's not like all of a sudden you're different, okay? There's different things that we're doing, but you're still the same person, okay? Your brand is going to be consistent no matter where you're going and what you're doing, right? Hopefully, it's consistent. Okay? Because if you're not consistent, people don't know what to expect from you. And then that's where that whole thing at the beginning, the reality check that I put up there, that you're going to be known for nothing, you don't want that. You want to consistently show up again and again and again so people know what to expect. I get a lot of comments from people on my blog post because like, this is totally like just hearing you talk. I'm like, yeah. Because I'm just like, just the way I talk and that just kind of like, I add a lot of color to my words, right? Okay, it's the same thing in my written way. I'm just almost done with my book, which is about how to network inside your company. It's the same thing. Like I'm being really sensitive to the fact like this is a representation of 20 years of my knowledge of how to help people have really awesome careers. So I want to make sure my voice is coming out in that. All right, it's a little bit of me wanting to leave my legacy, putting my mark on the world, right? So you want to think about those things for yourself, no matter what you're doing. Focus on how do you want to show up. Now, your personal brand is not defined by your job. It's not your job, okay? And it's definitely not the company that you work for. Now, you could work for a company that has a really questionable brand and you might decide, I don't want to stay here anymore because I don't want to be tied to that. All right? That's a really legitimate thing. Totally happens, okay? And your personal brand is not about only one aspect of your life. It isn't, okay? Your brand is not just what you're doing in the workplace or what you're doing in your household or what you're doing at church or what you're doing to insert anything else, right? It's the whole thing, the whole thing collectively. So I want to draw something out here for you. You're probably not going to be able to see it from up there, I'm sorry, unless you can zoom in really super far. Okay, so here's the deal. When I think about careers, it really starts when we graduate high school, and it goes to a point where we die. I know, you're going to be like, Jen, seriously, morbid? Okay, but that's the deal, right? When we die, ladies, when it's all said and done, there's no more living. There's no more opportunities to make our mark on the world anymore, okay? 
at least in our you know living breathing body right some people do really cool things like donate a bunch of money and get a you know building named after you thank you tanners right okay so but here's the thing is when it's all said and done what do you want to be known for what do you want them saying about you at your funeral and i know you're probably going oh my gosh jen like super morbid kind of gross right but think about it ladies every day that you're living along this path of life here it's leading to something so the same thing happens with the different jobs that you have along the way here at a certain point you're going to stop working for money and then you might have some other cool stuff that you do and then i'll like serve whatever missions and just do whatever grandparent time the whole thing rick so you know this right this is about ready to become really big in her life okay so at a certain point you stop working. So your brand is not about your work, ladies. That is, it's not about that, okay? It's how you're impacting people's lives. So other than work, what are the other roles that we have in life at the same time? What's that? Parent, okay, yep. Yep, so we got parenting along here. What else? Neighbor, Neighbor. okay. Great, what else? Volunteer. Volunteer, okay, good. All right, so we could add a whole bunch of stuff. So all at the same time, all these things are leading you along the way. How do you want people to know you along this way? So that if it was your funeral, what do you want somebody from volunteer saying about you, one of your kids saying about you, one of your coworkers or bosses, and one of your neighbors? What do you want them to say about you at your funeral? Decide today. So wherever, wherever you're at in this continuum, decide today how you want this to look. What do you want them to say about you? It's kind of cool. Any of you read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Covey, right? Okay, good book. One of, the, one of his seven habits is start with the end in mind. So the same idea. Start with this in mind, back it up to today, and then every day as you're progressing along, keep that in mind. It's really a beautiful place, because you know why it's beautiful? It helps me to know what to say no to and what to say yes to. Because at different times in my life, there's things I have to say no to. Because I can't like, get more than 24 hours a day, <clears throat> right? Keep working on that. I come from a family of engineers, and they just have not solved that problem for me yet. Okay, what, what else is coming to mind about these few things that I've put up here, or about this here? I asked the question so I can get a sip of water. So what's coming to mind? Mm -hmm. It could. You can have integrity can be part of your mantra, right? Yeah. Every day I want to be a person of integrity, right? And when it's my funeral, I want people to say, you know. So this is Marilyn saying, I want people to say that Marilyn was a woman of integrity, right? So you could have that. But it's your the personal brand. It's more than that, you know. It's it's how how you're leaving people thinking of you, right? To so your point of when you're not in the room anymore, what do you want them saying about you, right? That for sure. So it's closely tied to that. It being in integrity with your brand, yes, absolutely, right? For sure, please. It seems like it's a standard for a person to go work for a company for a long time that has brands. And those brands being what they spread, mm -hmm. they kind of serve as standards. Okay. And so yeah, like products, is that what you mean by brands? Oh, well, say I work for a hotel company. Okay. So I'm known for quality mm -hmm. brands. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely, yeah, for sure. So, because then it, when you even looking at the hotel options, you know when you're looking at them what they stand for, right? Because Holiday Inn says something totally different than Motel 6, right? Yeah, totally, it just it is, right, for sure. Good, very good. Okay, what else on this? Yeah, please, sorry. As, as I'm thinking about it, what it is kind of doing to me is a brand has to be genuine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in order right. for it to have, in order to have a successful brand, it has to be genuine. 
Right, exactly, similar to what Marilyn was saying with an integrity, right? So it does, you, you have to, it goes back to that thing I was saying, our first estate is that we're daughters of God, right? And he's endowed us with a sense of who we are. And so, yeah, being genuine back to that, right? And who we are and what we wanna be known for. And that's a, that's a big deal. And, a, and um, I never realized it as much until two and a half years ago when I became a mom for the first time, how much we squash what we want for ourselves. Can I get an amen for that? Right, thank you, okay. One of these days I'm gonna bring that into church. Right, the Baptists, they got it going on, amen, sister. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, if, if you're not genuine, it is so hard to know how you're gonna interact, right? So weren't you the one that said family, right? Yeah. Right? How are you gonna genuinely interact with your kids and cousins and siblings and grandparents, everybody else, right? If you don't know what it is that you wanna be known for at the end of your life. Right? And at the end of your life, it's not about being a nurse. Right? What's, what type of work are you doing right now? Look, I just finished my degree in nursing and formal study. Okay. But my question is, in, in thinking about this, it seems to me like kind of innately, do we know our brand mm -hmm. or no? We do. I feel like you kind of, because I've, I've always said that I know what I want to be on my, my epitaph. I uh -huh. was, so I feel like I've known. I just yeah. never thought about it as being mm -hmm. a brand. Right, right, absolutely. I'm just giving a vernacular yeah. to that, right? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. really sure, that. absolutely. Ultimately, you would each have your own brand statement that you live by. So a good company example is Nike, right? What's their brand statement? Just do it, right? They're like, we don't care what you do. Just get up off the couch and go do it. We don't care if you go swimming or tennis or football or whatever. Do it and use our stuff while you're doing it, please. <laughs> right? Okay, you get it? All right? But it stands for more than that. Nike does a lot of really cool stuff, very philanthropic things in the communities where they have their, their manufacturing plants. So, but they do it because it's just the right thing. They just do it, right? Okay, so yeah, a lot. you guys, don't be thinking all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, I've gotta come up with who, what my brand is. You already kinda know what it is a little bit. I'm helping you to kinda pull it out of the morass of all the stuff that's going on in your head. Pull it out, look at that beautiful diamond of what it is, and keep it as a focus, right? And the more you polish that diamond, the more you refine it, the bigger and brighter it will be. It's really beautiful. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about, and I'm gonna give you a brand example, because I wanna I want show you, again, how um, a brand is so much. So I'm gonna start listing some things up here, and I want you to see if you can think if you know who this is. Artist, architect, this is the same person. Engineer, inventor, scientist, musician, writer, geologist, cartographer. Who is it? It's Da Vinci. It's Da Vinci. Good job. You get brownie points. Good work. Okay? It's Da Vinci. So at the end of his life, he was not known as an artist. He's the guy who did Mona Lisa, kind of a big deal, right? Okay? The Last Supper, another kind of big deal. There's a lot of stuff. Art was definitely an area where he was really... Um, became very well, well known for, but there's so, and there's even more. Like I kind of got to a point, I'm like, okay, no more bullets on this, all right? Okay, there's a lot, those were the roles that he had. All these little lines here, right? So we could put artist, engineer, sculptor, all these things could be all these different lines, all right? Okay, he didn't say, oh, no, sorry, not willing to invent that because I'm an artist. Okay, no, he lived in this space of and. I do this and I do that, and, right? and I'm a family member, and I'm a friend, and I'm a whatever, okay? So ultimately, I was doing some research about him, and really, he is the Renaissance man. That's what he's known as, known as with an unquenchable curiosity. Unquenchable, right? Is that not evidenced by this, right? I'm, did anybody go to see the thing up in, at Leonardo, like four years ago, up in Salt Lake, the Leonardo? Wasn't that fantastic? It's good. Bye, bye. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time, too. It was really cool, wasn't it? All these things that he did. Can you tell them just like a couple of things? Do you remember that he that they had on display of his work? Um, they had like all these things. Yeah. Old yeah. Totally. He was the first person to design a tank. He actually did a lot of stuff for war stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Pick 
that one up. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> good. Excellent. Good. Just put it on the Mother's Day list. Get the kids get it for you. Okay, or put it on Christmas. But see, there's so much about him, right? So much. Okay, and a lot of times, it's just like he's the he's the artist, the creator of Mona Lisa. Like a lot of times, that's just what a lot of people think of him. But there's so much more. He totally lived in this space of and. And ladies, you can do that too. You can live in this space of and. You can totally make it happen. Rick's was talking a little bit about me, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you an example of being the and. So there's career coach Jen stuff that I do, okay? And there's also 3 a.m. with God. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about career coach Jen. I help companies hire the right people. I help them make sure they're keeping the right talent as well. Okay. I do speaking, I'm published, career coach. Okay, so there's all so that's just kind of a quick little thing under career coach Jen. There's a lot, and there's, and there's even more, all right, in that space, okay? So I'm not defined by being career coach Jen, okay? It was just kind of cool that the website was available too, and Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, you know, all that stuff, right, okay? But I'm not just career coach Jen, okay? I'm also a wife, and I'm an ex-wife, and I have a love for this family that I don't even talk to anymore because my first husband and I never had kids, so I don't have to talk to those people anymore, right? Which in some ways makes th things a little bit easier, right? And I'm a mom, and I'm a bonus mom, and I'm a sister, and I'm a neighbor, and I get to do emergency preparedness in my ward right now. I am so awesome. <laughs> it is so much fun. I went through that CERT certification. If you haven't done that yet, do it. You'll feel so much safer because when the earthquake happens, it's not when, it's, or not if, it's when, okay? I know how to save my kids out of the basement now. It's kind of cool, okay? So there's all these things about me, all right? So I'm living in this space of and, all right? Now let me tell you about 3 a.m. with God. 3 a.m. with God is a journal that I created so that when you wake up in the middle of the night and you get that inspiration, you write it down. And it's not just like a journal with just basic lines. Like you write down what God's telling you, how he woke you up, then you go back to bed, and then it has other things in there to help you so that you can take action on it. Here's the thing, ladies. I am all about helping people take action. That's really my brand. That's what I'm all about. Just like Da Vinci has this unquenchable curiosity, I'm all about helping people take action and helping them go do it. Rickson knows this firsthand because she and I have had the luxury of serving together in BYU Management Society for years. And she's seen what I do, and just by me showing up, and the types of questions that I ask, right? Like, why are we doing, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not okay with people saying that's the way we always do it. I'm like, so you want to go back to riding in the horse and carriage buggy thing? Okay, cool, because that's the way we always did it, right? Okay, so, but I created 3 with God. It's a really beautiful journal. And it's been super fun. I just launched this in February. And it's been amazing to see how people, my first two clients were two executive men to purchase this journal. We're like, totally, I totally know that if I don't have paper and pen by the side of my bed, I'm gonna miss out on stuff for my business. Tina, you're nodding your head. Tell me. I have a journal. Okay. But I want to see your Okay, good, yeah, totally. I got it, I got an example. Yeah, totally, absolutely. And that's the thing. God woke me, wakes me up all the time, three o'clock in the morning. I got these random post-it notes everywhere because I'm taking action all the time, right? He knows he can trust me to take action, so he's constantly giving me inspiration to do things, right? And then I lose the post-it notes. Yeah. I was going to say, I have a daughter who said, oh, if mom's got it in the middle of the night, it's golden. Go, right, totally. And you better listen up, kids. Right, it's, I totally, it's so good. I love it right here, sister, right here, okay? Totally, right? So... Okay, Heavenly Father's telling me create the journal. I'm not going to question my Heavenly Father because my first estate is what? <laughs> Daughter of God, right? Totally. The dad says and do. That's why I love going to the temple. It's like sitting in Heavenly Father's living room. And I'm not being totally sarcastic. I really do feel like it's sitting in Heavenly Father's living room. Sometimes I just want to fall asleep on the couch, but they kick you out at 10. So, <laughs> so here's, so let me tell you a little bit about Three with God. I'm the creator of it. I'm a woman of faith. I use the Three with God journal I use in all roles of my life and I'm helping others to take inspired action with it it's pretty cool it's been really awesome just in the last two months for people who've purchased these from me and how they're using it and they're telling me oh my gosh this is amazing one of my friends who's a young mom of three kids 
the oldest is nine, no, 10, excuse me. And she's like, I'm so excited that one day I'm gonna hand this journal off to my kids. And in my handwriting, they're gonna see the inspiration that God gave me in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought about the legacy factor of this. This is amazing. So things like this are happening and I'm totally stoked that I get to be like deputized. I call myself the chief inspiration officer. It's awesome, right? It's so cool to make this happen. It has nothing to do with this specifically, right? It doesn't, and yet it does because both these things interweave. Very good, oh, it's three o'clock. Okay, good, thank you, we needed that. So we're gonna wrap this up, okay? So, so ladies, be the ant. Do those things that you're prompted to do. It's really cool, okay. Um, I'm also a speaker, and you know what? I'm gonna pass this around. Go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. I've put on there, you can check if you want stuff from 3M with God and the Career Coach Gen. You can pick both, and they're totally different things. The Career Coach Gen stuff, I'm gonna send you email um, tips about career stuff. Chet, you get my emails, don't you? Is good stuff in there, right? Okay, and you get it? Yeah, totally, absolutely, thank you. And then um, the 3M with God stuff is more like inspirational, taking action on the inspiration. So check if you, whatever. Make sure you write clearly because I have a really hard time reading people's handwriting. Um, I'm also going to choose somebody from this list to get a prize, and you can choose between one of two things. I have a copy of a 3M with God journal with me. You can choose that, or I put together this really cool thing, Career Management 101. There's five CDs in here in a workbook. Okay, so somebody's gonna get this. You can choose, all right. Is that cool? I like free gifts? Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna kind of skip past this because we talked a little bit about like Nike and how Nikes just do it and what it means, okay? So here's the thing. Let's talk a little bit about what you can do for yourself to get your brand known for yourself, okay? So this again, this is good juicy stuff. You need to write this stuff down. So what do other people say about you? Because what they say about you is your brand. So here's a couple of cool things that you can do for yourself. Number one, ask them to describe you. So in one word, ask them to describe you. And when you send this request out, by the way, don't post this on Facebook. Because you know what happens? Super sarcastic comments. And people try to one-up each other with stupidity, right? And no, this is your career. This is your brand. This is what you want to be known for, okay? So send an email to people, blind carbon copy, because you know when you add mom to that email and she hits reply all and she says, oh, you're my sweet baby. You don't, don't want everybody to hear that, okay? Blind carbon copy everybody and say, hey, I'm really trying to make sure I know what people think of me. When you, when you think of me, what's that one word that comes to mind? Ask friends, family members, current, past coworkers, current bosses, former bosses. Send it out to a bunch of people and ask them to describe you in one word. Collect all that information, categorize it, put what all your friends say in one column, your family members in another column, you know, just on a piece of paper or something. Um, what do business people say about you, et cetera, et cetera, put them in columns and see, are there trends? Like are people in your business life thinking different things about you in your personal life? Because then you've got a misalignment there, right? Because we want all of this to be the same, okay? So it's a great way to find out how other people think about you. It's kind of a good way to check. Anybody done like marketing and you kind of check to see what customers think about a product? Anybody done that? Okay, it's kind of the same idea, but you are the product. And don't be freaked out by asking people. I have people go, oh, I don't want to do this. I make every one of my clients go through this process. And I do it myself too. I, I will only ask you to do things that I already use myself as a guinea pig. All right, last time I did it, instead of emailing, I texted people. Because truth be told, I did it while I was nursing my baby. And I had one hand free. Okay? And I just texted a whole bunch of people. I said, What do you think of me? What's that one word? And it was so cool to hear that what came back. The two things that were most consistent I heard from people is that I'm energizing to them and activating. I'm like, yes, 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 good. It's working. Okay? They feel like because I'm part of something, they feel energized. I'm like, awesome. It's working. And I want you all to say that about me at my funeral. Okay? All right, the other thing is look at recommendations, reviews. So LinkedIn, look at what people have written about you. And if you don't have any recommendations, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, ask for some recommendations, okay? And don't lead the witness. Don't say, I wanna be known for, and I need you to write that in my LinkedIn recommendation. Don't do that, that's not okay. Let it be organic, but see what people are telling you. Okay, what are they saying? Or you might have 360 reviews, you may have, um, in, 
any kind of an assessment that's been done by a boss or just anything, look for that kind of stuff. And as you're reading through it, look for anything that there's patterns. Is there something that's consistently showing up that people are saying about you? That's your brand. That's how people perceive you. And we all know what perceptions are, right? It's a reality. All right? Just like my brother and I, two years apart, same family experiences, totally different perceptions on the same vacations. But it's our individual realities, right? Okay. So, but you want to know what are people's perceptions. This is a great way to uncover and see what people have to say about you. Okay, so now I want you on your piece of paper or the back side of your piece of paper or whatever, I want you to write down all of your roles in life. So, daughter of God, girlfriend, fiance, a wife, ex-wife, a mom, an employee, retired, whatever. Put in all of your roles, everything on there. Please take one minute to do that. How many, do I really have to be done like right now? Well, we're going to start the next one at 3.15. Okay, so, all right. And they'll be coming in. Okay, cool, good. Okay, well, I think we can wrap this up in three minutes, so. Okay, 30 more seconds, please. Bye, ladies. See ya. And make sure the clipboard gets passed around too as we go. Okay, all righty. So you've got all of that written down, right? Okay, now I want you to, to the right of it, I want you to write down what is the thing about that role that you love doing the most? What do you love doing the most? Another way you can ask the question is, how do you like to show up in that role? What just really lights you up and feels really good inside when you're doing it? As a daughter-in-law, I'm like really good at organizing family events. And the great thing is they're not always even at my house. <laughs> okay, so we got some stuff. And I know I'm, I'm rushing this along a little bit. Okay. So when you look at all of those things, take a moment and look over. Are you seeing anything consistent? So on that right column, are you seeing anything consistent? Is there anything showing up for you? Judy, do you want to say something? No, I was. Okay, okay, that's good. Does anybody see something they want to say? Is anybody showing? Please, okay. Um, I like to see a change in people's lives. I like to help, I like to serve, and I like to see them go beyond their capabilities and get their best self. Nice, good. And you're seeing that showing up in these different roles, what you're doing to help? Good, great example, right? It's a very universal brand. And within that, she can be an architect and an artist and, a, and, 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 right? She can be the and. Okay, wonderful. So here's the thing. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna share with you five things that as you have your personal brand defined, it's gonna help you with. So ladies, my hope for you is as you walk away from this meeting today, that you know for yourself that you need to spend some time. Remember one of the first things I told you, it's your career, set aside some time to think and, and do some things. So take some of these notes that we've talked about today and spend some time thinking about it. Take yourself out to lunch by yourself, okay? Favorite sushi restaurant, whoop, okay? All right, and just sit down with a pad of paper and write these things, just think about it, right? Or maybe do it late at night, whatever, find that time, right? Okay, but do that, it's your career, spend some time. So here's a few things that are gonna help you. When you know your person, when your personal brand is defined, you're going to be able to do this better. It's going to be easier for you to make goals. Does that sound great? Right? You're going to be able to manage your time more effectively because you're going to know what you want to say yes to, what you want to say no to. Makes a huge difference in how you're going to show up. You're going to know how to network more authentically to your style and brand. When your personal brand is defined, trust me, this is a big deal, a big, big deal. And we all want to network, right? We want to get out there, okay? It'll make a big difference for you. 
You're also going to know how to use social media with a clear message that's going to help resonate, okay? You're going to be more on target and consistently because you can't always physically be in front of people. We're going to show up in their lives through social media as well in lots of different forms, right? Okay, so it's going to help you know what you're going to do with social media. And okay, so that's it for those few things. Um, a great book. I always like to suggest books to people all the time. Catherine Caputa wrote a book called You Are a Brand. Does anybody know who Catherine Caputa is? Mega bonus points if you know this one. Do you know this one? Okay. She's a lady who came up with I Heart and Why. New York was going through a massive crisis back in the 80s and they couldn't get people to come and they totally turned around. Now we see everything like I Heart Moab. You know, I mean, it's like everywhere, right? <laughs> okay. We totally ripped off Catherine Caputa. So, but she took everything she knows about branding a large organization like New York, boiled it all down and put it into a really helpful book. Okay, so this is a really, really great book. And it's not super expensive. You can get it on Amazon. So you are a brand, really good. Um, she's been on my blog, I mean my podcast a couple times. Great, great lady, really fantastic person. Okay, so at the end of your life, remember our little X over here, determine what you want to be known for. Oops. Okay, and that's what your brand is. You decide what you want to be known for, ladies. Don't let other people decide it for you. So we have our little sign-up sheet that's gone around because I need to... Okay, okay, ladies, let's be expeditious with their names. And then we'll do, we'll do a drawing for that. So as we're just letting that go by, what questions do you have about personal brand? And the conversation doesn't have to stop here, right? I'll be in your inbox, so we'll read more stuff. But what questions do you have? I did that good of a job? Mm -hmm. Awesome, please. Good, okay, great takeaway, thank you. That's good. Isn't it cool you get to have the and in your life, right? Okay, good, I love it. Questions? I'm gonna take a second. Okay. Yeah, thank you, what we're oh, doing. Oh, yeah, today. absolutely. Along, For sure. No, it's, you're not quite done here. I wanted to thank Jennifer, and we do have this gift that, that Angel provided, and it's again, you're part of that piece Quit. of the puzzle that helps us figure ourselves out and helps us move along and helps us improve. And yeah, thank you. You have in my life. Yeah, thank I know. Oh, I love Rixa. She's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right.